اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والحمد للہ الذی جعلنا من المتمسکین بولایت امیر المؤمنین ولعمت المعصومین علیہم السلام والحمد للہ الذی ہدانا لہذا وما کنا لنہتدی لولا ان ہدان اللہ والحمد للہ الذی لا یبلغ مدحته القائلون وَلَا يُحْسِي نَعْمَاءَهُ الْعَادُّونَ وَلَا يُوَدِّي حَقَّهُ الْمُجْتَهِدُونَ الَّذِي لَا يُدْرِكُهُ بُعُدُ الْهِمَمْ وَلَا يَنَالُهُ غَوْسُ الْفِطَنِ الَّذِي لَيْسَ لِصِفَتِهِ حَدٌ مَحْدُودٌ وَلَا نَعْتٌ مَوْجُودٌ وَلَا وَقْتٌ مَعْدُودٌ وَلَا أَجَلٌ مَمْدُودٌ فَتَرَ الْخَلَائِكَ بِقُدْرَتِهِ وَنَشَرَ الرِّيَاحَ بِرَحْمَتِهِ وَوَتَّدَ بِالسُّخُورِ مَيَدَانَ أَرْضِهِ ثُمَّ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَى أَشْرَفِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَالْمُرْسَلِينَ خَاتَمِ النَّبِيِّينَ شَفِيعِ الْمُذْنِبِينَ حَبِيبِ اللَّهِ الْعَالَمِينَ بِالْقَاسِمِ الْمُصْطَفَى مُحَمَّدٍ سَلِّعَ عَلَى محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين عما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أستق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولكل أمة أجل فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ صَلِّ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلِي مُحَمَّدْ أما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. There is no doubt that it's due to His kindness and generosity that He provides for us opportunities such as these where we gather in remembrance and in glorification of Him Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Next we begin this sermon the way the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi ma'afdalu salatu wa salam. Amma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Would begin many of his sermons by saying, Usikum wa nafsi bi taqwallahil azim. I advise you and I advise myself to be God conscious, God fearing, and pious human beings. We have been discussing the subject of Quranic eschatology, the subject of death and life after death, as has been described in the Holy Quran. And last week and for the past few weeks as well, we have been continuing on discussion, our discussion on the subject of barzakh. And in particular last week we discussed the questioning in the grave of those who are pious and how after their questioning and after their evaluation they will be allowed entry into the paradise or the Jannah of Barzakh. Now it is said in traditions that when they enter the paradise of Barzakh and they begin to get acclimated with the paradise of Barzakh, immediately they will be greeted by their family and friends who have preceded them into the realm of Barzakh and the paradise of Barzakh. They will join them, they will greet each other, they will welcome one another and then they will begin to ask them questions about the family members and friends that they had left behind. Our sixth Imam, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. He says in a tradition, souls occupy forms that resemble human bodies and live in gardens of paradise. They recognize and they communicate with one another. فَإِذَا قَدَمَتِ الرُّوحَ عَلَى الْأَرْوَاحِ And when a new soul arrives and it mingles and meets the other souls, they first say to themselves, دَعُوهَا Let him be, let it be. Yeah? Let the soul rest. Why? فَإِنَّهَا قَدْ أَفْلَتَتْ مِنْ حَوْلٍ عَظِيمٍ It has just finished a tremendous journey. 
Yeah? And they have experienced this journey, the loneliness of the grave, the squeezing of the grave, the questioning, all of these things have happened, it taxes the soul, it taxes the spirit. So the other souls who have experienced this already, they say to each other, let it be, yeah? let them relax, let them get their breath in other words. And after that soul has relaxed and has begun to get acclimated with the Jannah of Barzakh, they begin to ask, Thumma yes alunaha. مَا فَعَلَ فُلَانٌ وَمَا فَعَلَ فُلَانٌ yeah? What about this person? What about this person? Yeah? And they begin to recount and tell and they remember family members and friends. فَإِنْ قَالَتْ لَهُمْ تَرَكْتُهُ حَيًّا إِرْتَجَوْ yeah? He says that if their soul says to them, no, I left them and they were still alive, they become relaxed. Yeah? They become hopeful that they still have a chance to join them in the paradise of Barzakh. But if he says to them, if the soul says to them, وَإِنْ قَالَتْ لَهُمْ قَدْ هَلَكْ He died before me. Yeah? فَثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ قَدْ هَوَى قَدْ هَوَى yeah? That he is lost, he has fallen, he has fallen. Because if they were to enter the paradise, they would recognize and they would know. And this is an indication of those who are going to be suffering longer before they are allowed or those who have perished completely. After the soul gets introduced with its family and friends in the paradise of Barzakh, it continues to roam in that paradise. It continues to figure out and what it's trying to find is it's trying to find its place in paradise yeah what does that mean it's trying to find its place in paradise means it's trying to find a group of people that it can associate with and be comfortable with he meets many different groups of people he meets different people of different standards you can say yeah and finally he meets the group that he is most compatible with and most comfortable with now what does that mean that it meets a group that it's most comfortable with. Our traditions tell us and our ulama tell us that the compatibility and the attraction towards each other is based on the similarity of the deeds done in dunya. Yeah? And how the inner characteristic and personalities of these people were in dunya. You see my brothers and sisters, we are all believers. Yeah? We are all lovers and we are all obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But each and every one of us specializes in something different. Yeah? There are those who are extremely generous. There are those who are extremely obedient and they fast all the time. There are those who recite Salatul Layl all the time. We all have our specialities. Yeah? And depending on the speciality of the soul, it is then attracted to other souls who had that same speciality. Yeah? How does it recognize that speciality? Remember what we said a few weeks back. That the inner personality and the inner characteristics of each and every one of us will manifest itself to our outward appearance in the next realm. And therefore, we will be easily recognizable depending on what we used to do in dunya. And therefore, because this soul used to do something in particular, it now is attracted to the same group of people that used to do that same particular thing. And when they begin to meet with one another, there is a strong affection Affinity, a strong bond now that is developed between that soul and the group of that people who used to do those same characteristics. So much so it is said that the love that they feel for this group is more than the love that they feel for their own parents and siblings. Yeah? Because now it is the attraction of believers yeah? and there is no stronger bond than the bond of believers. Yeah? This is when the soul now has found its place in paradise. Yeah? It is now relaxed. And we are told by ulama that they now recite the following verse. وَقَالُوا أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي صَدَقَنَا وَعْدَهُ وَأَوْرَثَنَا الْأَرْضِ نَتَبَوَّعُوا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ حَيْثُ نَشَاءَ أَحْسَنْتُمْ فَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ Amilin. Yeah? They will say all praise belongs to Allah who has fulfilled His promise to us and has made us heirs on this earth that we may settle in paradise wherever we may wish. Subhanallah. Yeah? This is the promise of God that I will let you find your own place in paradise. And He had that freedom. She had that freedom to where they found that place and they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other side, yeah? Those who were sent to the Jahannam of Barzakh, 
Yeah? They will enter barzakh as well. They will enter that punishment as well. And they will be greeted by people as well. But the people who are greeting them will not be welcoming them. Yeah? They will be intimidating them. They will be trying to suppress them. They will try to oppress them. Yeah? And it too will wander in the Jahannam of Barzakh until it finds the same group of people who it is compatible with. But even with that group, there's going to be no trust amongst one another. There's going to be always having to watch your back because you never know when someone is trying to get the best of you. Inshallah, next week, if God gives us life, we discuss now the middle group. Remember, these were the first two groups. There is a middle group which does not undergo questioning and we will discuss their fate in Barzakh and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are part of this first group who is allowed to enjoy the paradise of Barzakh inshaAllah. وآخر الدعوان أن الحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله العلي العظيم صلي على محمد وعلى محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين سريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد اللهم صل على أدواج محمد وصل على سيد الوصيين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على سبتي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة ما صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي صل على محمد وعلى محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير نعم صل على محمد Today we are celebrating Earth Day yeah, and it is a day in which we recognize and appreciate all of the gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us and the responsibilities that we have with these gifts that He has given it to that He has given to us. As we know, everything around us, everything around us is from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, verse number 190, Inna fi khalqis wal wa nahar la albab. Yeah. He says indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the night and the day there are signs for the people who possess intellect. Yeah. Those who look 
those who recognize, they will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everywhere and they will be able to distinguish between the zulm of human beings versus the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a responsibility that each and every one of us have to recognize this bounty. And on top of that, we have been given then this responsibility or these signs and this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an amana. Yeah, as a responsibility that we have to look after it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It is I, he says, it is he who has made you successors on this earth, inheritors of the earth. And so my brothers and sisters, we have a tremendous responsibility to make sure that the earth that we live in is treated fairly and that we make sure that the environment that is around us is one that will last and will continue to be beautified for future generations to come. And thus we have been given this responsibility. This year there is a green khutbah campaign just like every single year that we do. And every masajid and every husayniya have asked to be participate, have asked I have been asked to participate in this green khutbah and this year the green khutbah is concentrating on a 3C plan. I think there was a similar plan that we did last year if you remember. This year the 3 C's are cur curbing consumption, conserving energy and commuting smarter. We're going to briefly talk about these things and see how each of us can play a part in trying to make sure that we do our role in protecting the environment. The first is curbing consumption. You know, overconsumption has been a growing environmental issue for the past several decades, right? Where people buy more than they need and then they waste that which they don't need. You know, it is said, this is, these are remarkable statistics, right? Worldwide, about one third of the food that is produced for human consumption, worldwide, yeah? One third of the food that is produced for human consumption is lost or wasted before it even comes to the home of the consumer. Yeah? One third, right? I mean, if you look at some of the statistics, you will find that, you know, many grocery stores, for example, when they present the fruit and they present the vegetables, if they have dents and if they have bruises, they simply throw them away. There's nothing wrong with that fruit. It's just not, um, it's not, it's not beautiful to the eye, so they're worried people won't buy it. But as a whole, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And you find, you know, there are studies that have been done that those who are homeless can actually eat better than those who are not homeless simply picking the garbage of, of grocery stores. Yeah? One third, my brothers and sisters, of food that is produced doesn't even hit the grocery stores, doesn't even come to our homes. And in Canada in particular, it is said Canada's are, Canadians are contributing by this waste, uh, by wasting approximately 31 billion dollars of food each year. Canadians, 31 billion dollars. Can you imagine what we can do with that money? And 47% of that waste is done from the home. That means we buy more than we need and then the expiration date comes, we haven't even eaten it and we throw it out. Yeah? So what can we do? The most important thing is we need to learn to curb our consumption. Yeah? We need to not buy on impulse, rather we need to choose wisely when we buy. You know, one of the simplest things we can do is never go to the grocery store when we're hungry. Yeah? One of the most simplest things we can do, you know, maybe we can all do this, right? Where we have our food and then we'll go to the grocery store. We will not buy unnecessary things because the taste is gone of food. Right? And these are some of the simple things that we can do to make sure that we are not amongst those who are wasting in this way. By God, we will be taken into account for this, my brothers and sisters. Yeah? And there is a responsibility. We wonder why there is poverty and lack of food in different parts of the world. And we don't look at our own houses and how much we are depriving others because of our greed. Yeah? So this is some of the things that we can do. When we go to a restaurant, order wisely. Yeah? Order wisely instead of ordering with our stomachs, right? So these are some of the things we can do to curb consumption. As far as conserving energy, this is the second C. Conserving energy is the easiest way we are told to reduce carbon emissions. It says that per capita, Canada has been consistently rated in the top 20 in the world in the great contributors to greenhouse gases. Yeah? We waste energy. 
Yeah, more than most of the countries. There are about 175 countries or more. We are in the top 20 as far as waste is concerned. What can we do? We can do many things. Yeah? We can, for example, change all our light bulbs to energy-saving light bulbs. Right? Um, we can make sure, for example, that when we leave a room, we turn off the light in that room. You know, sometimes we just have a habit that the entire house's lights will be on and we're not even in most of these rooms. You leave a room, you turn off the light. When you're brushing your teeth, you turn off the tap. When you're doing wazoo, conserve water when you're doing wazoo and don't let water just run. There are many things that we can do to conserve energy and I think it is a responsibility for all of us. I know the mosque has taken initiatives to go green we can do more in our own personal lives as well to make sure that we are doing this way. Another thing we are told is regarding heating and cooling. You know, nowadays, many of us have the habit that our air condition or our heater will be on 24-7. Yeah? And majority of that time, at least 12 hours of that time, we're not even home. Yeah? We can set our thermostats. You can buy a device now where you can set a thermostat depending on time. Yeah? Where you say, okay, this to this time, I know that I will not be there. So I can change or I can turn off my heating and cooling. These are just some of the ideas that, that I have. I'm sure many of us have greater ideas as far as how we can do a better job of conserving energy. So that's the second. What was the first? Consumption. consumption. Ahsantum. Yeah? Our consumption can be lowered. Right? Second? Conserving energy. You know, going back to consumption, we're going to come to the month of Ramadan right now. Yeah? You'll be surprised how much food is wasted in the month of Ramadan. Subhanallah. Yeah? We, we eat with our stomachs rather than with our minds. Right? Um, there's no need to take so much. No one's ever going to stop us from going three, four, five times to go get food. But to take so much at one go and then waste most of it, um, what use is that fast? We have to ask ourselves. Yeah? When we have not understood the ethos of fasting, you'll see people eat and there'll be rice all around their plate as if the, as if the, the mat was hungry. Yeah? Um, but they have not regarded the wasting of food. These are the responsibilities that we have that we can do. The third is what we've been asked to talk about is commuting smarter. Right? Um, and here what we are talking about is one of the more visible ways to reduce our carbon footprint is by commuting smarter. You know there's a very interesting t t statistic. C Canadian Medical Association says that air, per air pollution prematurely kills 21,000 Canadians a year. <coughs> Subhanallah, think about that. Yeah, Air pollution kills 21,000 people a year in Canada and the toxic brew of chemical in smog sends tens of thousands more to hospital emergency rooms. We don't even hear these statistics, right? Um, because obviously the government is relying on oil, the government is doing these different things, so they don't want us really to know that by doing all of these things. But we are responsible. What can we do? You know, I don't want to be like the DMV or the Department of Motor Vehicles, but we can be effective drivers. Right? And what that means is that the way I drive my car, right? the way I accelerate, the way I brake, the way um, my, I handle the car, all of that has an effect on carbon emission. More than that, you know, I need to make sure that my car undergoes regular maintenance. Right? Oil check, smog check, all of these things. My brothers and sisters, you know, as the inheritors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're going to be responsible for every step that we take on this earth. And even how we drive and the car we drive. Maybe if I have to invest in a better car, but I know that that has a greater value in the long run, that will be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not a waste of money. And of course, one of the things they asked us to talk about as well is smarter commutes. Right? to be smart when we drive our cars. And some examples are this, for example, combining several trips together. So rather than going out one time and then coming back and then going out again, plan your day, yeah? plan your day out, your route out, and make several trips at once, carpooling whenever possible. I know the mosque, alhamdulillah, here has put up an initiative on carpooling to mosque. We want to bring less cars to mosque. Yeah? And we've asked us to let us know where you live and we can maybe map out a carpooling system so where we can reduce the number of cars that are driven and that come to mosque. These are just some of the things that we can do. And as a whole, 
I pray that we value the gift that has been given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we lose it and then we will cry about it after we have lost it. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. A'udhu billahi min ash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wal asr. إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العلي العظيم. ما صلي على